Poco X2 has a metal glass sandwich design flanked by Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back. The X2 has a side mounted fingerprint sensor. The bottom edge is home to a USB Type C port, a 3.5mm earphone jack, and a speaker grill. There's an IR blaster on the top edge and volume rockers on the right edge. Poco X2 features a 6.6 inch Full HD Plus resolution LCD screen with a dual punch hole cutout in the top right corner. It gives the display a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, which offers a wider screen state for viewing videos or playing games. The highlight of the display on the Poco X2 is that it supports a 120Hz refresh rate, which offers a smooth navigation and it helps improve the gaming experience. Poco X2 has a 64MP quad camera setup that uses Sony IMX686 sensor for the primary camera with 1.89 aperture and PDAF support. An 8MP ultrawide lens follows this with a 120 degree field of view, a 2MP macro camera with a minimum focusing distance of 2cm and a 2MP depth sensor. The phone has dual in-screen cameras on the front, a 20MP primary camera supported by a 2MP depth sensor for selfies and face recognition. The X2's camera system can record at 4K and slow motion videos at 960fps with electronic image stabilization support. It also supports raw image capture and a vlog mode with 7 styles. Poco X2 is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G chipset paired with an octa-core CPU and Adreno 618 GPU. This is a gaming-centric processor by Qualcomm as it brings some Snapdragon Elite gaming features to the table. It renders graphics 15% faster than the previous generation, supports true HDR gaming and cinematic quality processing. The phone comes with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage option. The battery capacity is rated at 4500mAh with support for 27W fast charging and Poco claims the fast charge provided in the box can refuel the phone fully in 68 minutes. Poco X2 seems like a value for money offering with a high refresh rate screen, powerful chipset tuned for gaming, a versatile quad camera array and fast charging support. This smartphone sports a big 6.4 inch displays with water drop notch, which Samsung calls Infinity U displays. The bezels aren't thin but are acceptable for the price. Just like with other M series smartphones, Samsung has used plastic in the construction of the Galaxy M31. The earpiece is sleek and it sits right above the display in the frame of the smartphone. The Galaxy M31 feels comfortable to hold in the hand. The sides are slightly curved, which helps with grip. Samsung has positioned the power and volume buttons on the right of the device. The Galaxy M31 has a 3.5mm headphone jack, primary microphone, USB Type-C port, and a speaker at the bottom. Samsung has retained the Exynos 9611 chipset from the Galaxy M30s. This is an octa-core processor with great performance. For graphics, it has the Mali G72 GPU. You get 6GB of RAM and a choice between a 64GB storage variant and a 128GB of storage variant. The device is fairly quick to load up apps, however, big apps do take slightly longer. Since there is plenty of RAM, multitasking is very easy. The Galaxy M31 sports a quad camera setup at the back and a single 32MP selfie shooter. It sports a quad camera setup at the back and a single 32MP selfie shooter. The primary camera on the Galaxy M31 has a 64MP resolution and 1.8 aperture. There's also an 8MP ultra wide angle camera with a 120 degree field of view. The other two are 5MP depth sensor and a 5MP macro camera. Samsung's camera app is the same as before. Photos turned out well and have decent details. The smartphone enables HDR automatically if required. Switching to the wide angle camera is easy and you can get a wider field of view. This phone is capable of separating subjects and backgrounds when shooting close ups. Photos taken in low light looked good. Rear camera can record 4K video at 30fps. There is a single 32MP camera on the front. Selfies taken with the Galaxy M31 were decent when shot with sufficient lighting around. The front delivers good quality pictures all around. You can also record 4K video with the front camera. M31 packs in a big 6000mAh battery with 15W fast charging support. With every new model, Realme changes the design of the back, and for the 6 Pro, we now have a lightning inspired design in either blue or orange. The glossy finish of the back makes this phone very slippery, but thankfully, it's Gorilla Glass 5. The Realme 6 Pro features a 6.6 inch LCD display with a dual punch hole cutout. 
The 6.6 inch LCD panel on the Realme 6 Pro is capable of 90Hz refresh rate and you can switch between 60Hz and 90Hz from settings or leave it on auto and let the software decide. Even though this isn't an AMOLED panel, we found the colors and brightness to be more than adequate. Realme is proud of the fact that the Realme 6 Pro is the world's first phone to feature the Snapdragon 720G mobile chipset. The Snapdragon 720G is a powerful chip. So as expected, general usage and multitasking was handled superbly. Actual gaming performance is pretty solid too. PUBG Mobile ran smoothly at relatively high graphics setting. Battery drain was under 10% after a 30 minute watch, which is good and there wasn't much heating either. The Realme 6 Pro is available in three versions, one with 6GB of RAM and 64GB of storage, another with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, and the top-end variant with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. The Realme 6 Pro has a similar rear camera setup to the Realme 6, but with the depth camera swapped for a telephoto camera. There is a 64MP primary sensor and 8MP ultra-wide camera, a 12MP telephoto camera with 2x optical zoom and 20x hybrid zoom, and a 2MP macro camera. In the front, we have a 16MP primary camera and a second 8MP wide-angle camera. You will be happy with the landscapes and close-up shots with the Realme 6 Pro during the day. Distant objects have fairly good details, colors are well represented and HDR works very well. Photos captured by the telephoto camera were decent too. In low light, the primary camera is pretty capable and manages a fair bit of detail with good colors. We were quite impressed with the quality and detail in photos taken with the front cameras. The wide-angle camera is great for taking a group selfie and you can even shoot videos with it but night mode only works on the main selfie camera. The 6 Pro also supports slow motion selfies with the primary selfie camera. The Realme 6 Pro can shoot videos at up to 4K but only at 30fps. Video quality is generally good at 4K but if you are moving a lot then it's best to stick to 1080p resolution. The Realme 6 Pro packs in a respectable 4300 mAh battery with the support for 30W fast charging. The 6 Pro delivers a solid day and a half of battery life even with heavy uses. The 30W fast charger manages to charge the battery from 0 to about 90% in an hour which again is very quick. Moto G8 Plus has a plastic build and comes in two color options, cosmic blue and crystal pink. The back panel has a gradient-like glossy finish with the camera modules tucked into the top left corner and the iconic Motorola Batwing logo aligned in the middle. On the top edge, there's a microphone and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The Moto G8 Plus has a 6.3 inches screen. It is an IPS LCD panel with a full HD Plus resolution. The screen has 19 by 9 aspect ratio, which is decent for watching videos. It is suitable for casual viewing and gaming, especially if you are traveling and are always on the go. The Moto G8 Plus is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 chipset, which we have seen on a few other mid-range phones. This is paired with an Adreno 610 as the GPU. The chip also brings in third generation AI engine. The phone has 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage with an option to expand the storage by up to 512GB via microSD card. This device has a triple rear camera setup. The cameras on the Moto G8 Plus consist of a primary 48MP sensor paired with a 16MP ultra wide angle lens with a 117 degree field of view and a 5MP depth sensor which assists in portrait mode. On the front, there is a 25MP selfie camera housed within the notch cutout. The primary camera can record videos in 4K at 30fps and Full HD at up to 120fps. The phone has an electric stabilization in place for videos, which is pretty good at its job of keeping footage stabilized while shooting. The primary 48MP camera captures sharp and colorful images in the daytime, however during the night the pictures are filled with grains. Moto G8 Plus is powered by a 4000mAh battery, which is a pretty decent capacity. This device supports 15W fast charging with the turbo power adapter provided in the box. The Redmi Note 9 Pro is a bulky phone. The front and rear of the Redmi Note 9 Pro are both made using Gorilla Glass 5, while the frame is polycarbonate. The most distinctive feature on the front is of course the new embedded selfie camera which is centered at the top of the screen. 
Xiaomi has done well in terms of design and the Redmi Note 9 Pro does feel fresh without actually changing too much for a phone in this segment. There's the usual USB Type-C port, 3.5mm audio socket and a speaker on the bottom. You get a 6.67 inch Full HD Plus screen which has a tall aspect ratio to accommodate the front camera. It might surprise many fans who follow current trends because it is a standard 60Hz panel and doesn't have a 90Hz refresh rate like some other recently launched devices. This device comes with the Snapdragon 720G chipset. You can get the Redmi Note 9 Pro with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage or with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. The Redmi Note 9 Pro is more than powerful enough to handle anything from basic calls and messaging all the way up to heavy 3D gaming and with no trouble whatsoever. The squared off camera bump on the rear might also surprise some Redmi Note series fans. It is a quad camera setup, the primary shooter has a 48 megapixel resolution with 1.79 aperture. Next to it, you will find an 8 megapixel wide angle camera, which is a pretty standard for this price level. The 2 megapixel depth sensor in the lower row is also basic. What is interesting is the fact that the macro camera has a 5 megapixel resolution. This device comes with an improved night mode, super face detection autofocus, and a color profile optimized for Indian users. Video can be recorded at 4K 30fps or 1080p at 60fps, 720p slow-mo recording goes up to 960fps. One of this phone's primary target audience is video content creators, especially TikTok users. So there's a short video mode with a 15 second cutoff. The front camera has a 16 megapixel resolution. With daytime photos, we found the primary camera to be reasonably good, close-ups look good and details were clear in foreground subjects. The 5 megapixel macro camera does deliver much higher quality shots than we have seen from most other macro cameras. The front camera is fairly good in daytime as well as at night. As for the battery, it comes with 5020 mAh capacity with 18W fast charging support.